This video investigates the radial motion of photons in a Schwarzschild space-time for both the ingoing and outgoing directions. It does this using plots of these geodesics and shows how the local light cones behave in this geometry. The region within the Schwarzschild radius is investigated where the light cones tip over and point towards the singularity. Now this video follows up to the ninth video in this series, Schwarzschild Geodesics number nine. And just pick up on some of the results from there. Uh, we found that uh, for photons following a radially null geodesic, we have d theta and d phi, the angular uh, differential is zero. And that left us with the line element in this form here. And of course for photons traveling along a radially null geodesic, this line interval here is zero. And from that we found in that video, if you go back to it, the ninth in this series, that for an outgoing photon we get this geodesic here. And when we solve this differential equation up here. And replacing t with minus t, we get for the ingoing photon geodesic, we get this object here, this equation here. And the Schwarzschild radius, of course, is this. Uh, then, um, it also in that video, and just replaying it here again, is a plot of a geodesic of an outward going photon for a Schwarzschild black hole with a mass equal to that of Sagittarius A star, the compact object at the center of our galaxy. And so, this is the outgoing geodesic here, time, vertical axis here, radius here, and this is coordinate radius and coordinate time, and this is an observer, this is the geodesic according to the equation on the previous slide. Now we can also add the geodesic for a photon on a radially inwards moving path. This one here, again the Schwarzschild radius here, and the asymptote at the at the Schwarzschild radius, 2gm and c squared, and this is where the line element becomes undefined. Uh, and this represents as we'll see later on, a coordinate singularity and not a real physical singularity. So, in other words, as a consequence of the coordinates we've used, we end up with this singularity. It does not actually represent a physical uh, barrier to the motion of objects. Alright, so let's look at the general shape of these ingoing and outgoing geodesics for photons moving on radial paths near a Schwarzschild mass. So the general form, this is just a generic type here, Here's the Schwarzschild radius and an outgoing one here. Now let's add an inward one here. Again, notice how they asymptote towards the Schwarzschild radius here, getting arbitrary closer and closer, uh, but not actually crossing. So if an observer way out here at infinity, this is what the observer is observing these geodesics here. The photon gets up to really close to the Schwarzschild radius but never actually crosses it. So it takes an infinite amount of time. It will cross the uh, Schwarzschild uh, radius at some point in the infinite far future. All right, now just to remind light cones in flat space and also in the Schwarzschild geometry at r equals infinity, the local observer's light cone has the familiar flat space form of Minkowski space, and the RDT is plus or minus c, depending on the inward or outgoing light ray. And so we get these nice diagonal lines that we're familiar with from special relativity. And these yellow um, ellipses here, just to re represent symbolically the uh, light cone, and I'll be using these in the diagrams to come, just to look at the behavior of light cones as we go. But in flat space, these form nice diagonals here, uh, and the axes on the unit are in meters, and CT also in units of meters. Okay, now we can use the geodesics near a Schwarzschild mass to probe the behavior of the local light cones. Now we found in other videos that the, um, the speed of light for the Observer outside the Schwarzschild radius here, an observer will record the speed of light to be, depending on their location, r to be with this object here. At r equals infinity, this bit goes to zero, and we get the familiar flat space um, light curves that we're used to the 
nice diagonals at 45 degrees. Now, if we have a look here, we have an inward geodesic here, and we have an outward geodesic here, and so we see our light cone here is in between these two. Just as in flat space, we have the nice diagonal lines crossing and uh, making 45 degrees with the axes, and we can see what the light cone looks like in flat space. Well, closer in, we can investigate what happens to the light, light cones as we move closer in to the Schwartz style radius. Now, we have dealt with this in other videos, but in this particular video, I'd like to look at it from the point of view of the geodesics and plot them and see what actually happens. All right, now, light cones close up as the Schwartz style radius is approached, and looking at some outward going geodesics here and the red and the orange inward going ones and we can see that this looks like the familiar flat space light cone far away whereas we get closer and the light cones close up light appears to be slowing down as it gets closer and closer to the Schwarzschild radius and so the distant observer over here to the right far from the Schwarzschild radius appear sees the photon taking what appears an infinite amount of time to reach the Schwarzschild radius. Hence these inward light cones here asymptote towards this radius. And time goes off to infinity here. In the far infinite future, at some point, only at infinity, do these photons cross, according to the observer out here. Alright, uh, looking at a few more of these. Uh, inward ones and outward going ones and we look at the light cones here and we see how they close up as they approach as these geodesics come closer to the Schwarzschild radius. Alright, now the local light cone for the Corden Observer is determined from by this this expression here which we found and we can rewrite that the 2gm on c squared, we can put rs there, Schwarzschild radius, over r, and this simplifies the expression symbolically, and that means we can have a look at what happens when we cross the Schwarzschild radius, and what happens on the other side, r is less than the Schwarzschild radius, and when this value here, r, is less than rs, what happens? Okay, so let's rewrite the line element. Or pure radial motion, so the angular part has gone to zero, and we come up with this object here, Rs on R, Rs on Y, and we've noticed that where R is less than Rs, smaller, this is negative, becomes negative, and dominates, because this becomes greater than 1, and we have minus 1 here, the minus out here and the minus here cancels, so we can rewrite this line entirely, in this form here. And this is in the region where R is less than Rs. And what actually happens is that we end up flipping, if you notice here, the, the time component here is negative and the radial component is positive, and now they swap roles. And that gives us some idea of what's happening to the light cones on the other side of the Schwarzschild radius. Alright, now setting again for light rays for photons, ds squared is zero for a photon, and so setting the previous expression to zero, doing a little bit of algebra here, we can rearrange this and solve it and get drdt, and now we produce a different expression to the one we've seen earlier near the start of the video. Now we can add to differentiate this and so on as we did in the previous video and we come up with solutions for inward and outward going light, light rays or photon geodesics to the left inside the Schwartz type radius and that's this object here where RS is the Schwartz type radius. Alright, so the outgoing geodesics on both sides of the Schwarzschild radius shown, are now shown here below. Here's the Schwarzschild radius here, here's the ones we're familiar with, the outgoing geodesics. But this branch here to the left is also classified as an outgoing, coming from the outgoing solution. And then we can add that, it's an ingoing geodesic, so we saw this one earlier, ingoing. 
But on the other side, the branch over here, this is the ingoing over here. All right, so we have the outgoing in blue and the ingoing in orange. Short side radius, the singularity at r equals zero here. And if we plot a few of these on both sides, we notice here, as familiar, the flat space light cones here, nice broad diagonal, 45 degrees with respect to the R and T axes. As we move closer in, they close up. You can see there's a very small one here to the right of the Schwarz type radius, they really close up. Light really appears to slow down close to the Schwarz type radius. On the other side though, the light cones have tipped over. And if you remember, the line element changed sign. The time component became positive and the spatial component became negative. And so the light cones swapped over. Now what we also notice as the light cones move towards the singularity, they close up. So as, as the photon inside the Schwarz type radius here approaches the singularity along here, r equals zero, right, these light cones now close up. Once inside the Schwarz type radius, any object there, a massive particle or a photon is moving unquestionably, inexorably towards the singularity. There is no other way. And so as that light cone closes up, what actually happens, because the time axis and the space axis have swapped with each other, we end up having this relationship here, dr dt is plus or minus c times r s on r minus 1 approaches infinity as r approaches 0. So space-time is rapidly moving in towards the singularity here, and anything that's crossed the schwarz type radius here is absolutely going only in one direction only, and that is towards the singularity. And as it does, it speeds up faster and faster. And as a result, we can see the light cone actually closes up as the speed goes towards infinity. Now, <clears throat> this is very different because in flat space, this would be a different result. As R went towards the um, uh, Schwarz type radius, the speed of light slowed down to the observer far from the Schwarz type radius. Inside here, it's now speeding up. Not that the observer outside the Schwarz type radius obviously can see that because they can't. But once inside the black hole, certainly all objects are going only in one direction. That's towards the singularity. That's where their light cones tip over and point towards. And they become faster and faster as they move towards the singularity. And that is that.